Hey, what's up, guys? So uh, today we're going to talk about not so, let's say, technical stuff. It's not going to be any how-to or manual or whatever else. We're just going to talk about a theory, and a theory is behind, like, can a monitoring software save you some money? So basically, can you gain some money by using the monitoring software? And the short answer is absolutely yes. The long answer we're going to talk through in, like, next uh, five, six, seven, eight minutes. Um, first of all, like many, let's say not a big companies, but the small companies, uh, don't even have any monitoring solutions, right? They're just, uh, relying on their internal resources, uh, employees watching that everything going to be working and there won't be any problems, but it doesn't really make sense. And, uh, on the question, like, why don't you have any monitoring software in your, um, I don't know, business company, whatever else they may just ask, like, uh, but why do we need it? And, uh, so why to save some resources and to save also some money uh, for your company? First of all, starting with uh, the most generic things like we we use monitoring software, which means that we are collecting some sort of the data inside. So we have a lot of the data from our company, from our services, servers, applications, uh, workstations, whatever else, and we can use this data for our benefit and uh, first of all all the reachability and availability of our services servers resources whatever else normally like if we're an IT company that then we are making money uh, from some IT services that's how it usually works and if that IT service is not reachable we are not earning any money and very simple, like if we don't have any uh, monitoring software, then we will not even know is that service reachable or not. If let's say it is a weekend where some holidays and something breaks over a night and our web page is not working right now, which may be just an Amazon like store, whatever else, then our customers are not able to uh, make any purchases and we don't get any money. So easy as that right and uh, if we have a monitoring software then it's absolutely easy to configure all of those um, availability checks and just make sure that these services are running and if there will be some sort of a problem you probably were wondering like what is this so yeah that's a cup of coffee uh, so if there will be some sort of the problem happening we will get notified immediately and that would be like the most common approach for the monitoring. Um, nothing new, but there's really more about it. Like we collect a lot of the data. Uh, it again depends from our configuration. What do we want to collect? What we are actually collecting? But then it's a matter of uh, how we are actually going to use this data. Because again, there are many ways how we can utilize this data we can create uh, graphs dashboards uh, for our managers and understand some sort of the impact of the changes that we made in our company is it referring our metrics uh, another point is like capacity planning um, nowadays like most of the stuff most of it companies servers and whatever else are hosted in the clouds and uh, if we take a typical cloud, I don't know, AWS, Azure, Google Cloud, whatever else, uh, then um, when we are creating, let's say, a virtual machine, we need to define resources, right? We just need to pick a size, how many CPU cores will it have, how many memory will it have, and whatsoever. But uh, normally, very often, we don't actually know how much resources we gonna need for our servers and we just uh, let's say we think that uh, four cores four gigs might be enough and just to be sure let's actually double this to eight cores eight gigs and the thing is that we are actually paying for these resources all the time that's how how the cloud services earn earn their money and uh, if we have a monitoring set up in our company monitoring all these virtual machines for a longer time period let's say in one year we can create a report looking on very simple thing a memory utilization on all our servers and then do the analytics on this data and simply see 
what servers were running uh, with an average utilization, let's say like 10, 15 percentage of the memory only. So it means that we thrown on these servers as an example, eight gigs of the memory, but these servers are only utilizing like one or two gigs. So from next year, if we know that this is happening and we have a one year period for analyzation, so we're kind of sure in our results, what we can do, we can simply uh, downgrade these virtual machines from eight gigs of memory to four gigs of memory. And we're going to pay less. And uh, it, it may sound like a ride, but we're talking about like, I know, a couple of dollars uh, on the virtual machine uh, in a year. Absolutely. But uh, just think about how many uh, those virtual machines do you have in your environment? How many services you are running? How many applications, web services, uh, whatever else, which may be uh, getting too much resources than they actually need. And you already have this data, which is showing to you that we are using only five, 10 percent of uh, the allocated resources. So we can simply downgrade and save some money. Also, like, let's say if, uh, again, the same example about uh, uh, web store in, in the internet, something Amazon likes. So we have, most likely there would be some sort of the marketing um, team that would be working on the design of the, of the store, looking on the various things like how should we advertise this product, that product, should we have like uh, four products on the first page or just two and various different decisions just to make, uh, let's say more sales and again, more money to the company. But if you don't monitor anything, there's uh, very, very complicated to see what changes, how did our changes that we made affected the actual performance of our website. So let's say previously we had only two products in the front page and today we decided that we want to have eight of them. Plus we added, uh, I don't know, big yellow sign on these pr products with uh, text that's, uh, I don't know, Black Friday discount. And if we don't monitor anything, then we don't actually see, was it, did it affect it? anything did we sold more did we got something what about um customer uh what pages did customers open did they actually click on these products or they just moved away what was the average session duration on this page did it increase or decreased so this is also all the information that you might be um getting from your resources from your stores your businesses and whatever else and then just using these this data to make a proper decisions and these decisions could on the other hand first of all save you some money and uh, well basically also earn you some some money because it will be more easier to make those decisions to succeed in uh, future deals and uh, so long story short uh to sum up this video like don't don't just stick with the default monitoring tasks like monitoring uh, CPU, disk space, uh, memory, uh, service available or not. This is cool, but you have an extremely flexible monitoring software which allows you to gather a lot of the data and you can store this data in your database, which means that you can use it in the internal graphs, plus you can uh, use it with the third-party softwares and also do some graphing reporting and data analytics. So what I'm trying to suggest to you is use all the data that you're collecting, uh, look on it on a wider data period and try to understand some data flows and uh, how it can help you and how it can help you to minimize costs and uh, get you more money. So thank you guys for this short 10 minute, 10-ish uh, minute uh, theory video. Um, thank you, and we'll definitely see you in the next one. So goodbye.